All right, let's have a look. Now, it is, it is long, it is long, but uh, if you are patient with it, it's actually not that complicated. I like to think about, um, in maths, some problems look very intimidating, but they can be sort of hard in two ways. Some problems, they're, they're very small, but they're deep. It's like, a, it's like a, a really deep pool, and you're like, oh my goodness, I have to swim really well to get across here. Other problems are very shallow, but they're just wide. It just takes you ages to go across, but it's, it's not challenging. I would put this question in the second category. Gentlemen. Good to go? This is not conceptually difficult, it's algebra. We're okay with algebra, but you do have to be patient with yourself and careful as well. So let's have a look. Top line, and hopefully you're starting to get used to this, right? I'm saying, all right, if I want to find this derivative, this gradient function, the way I will do it is using this process. I'm going to use the difference quotient. Here it is, this big awkward thing on the right. And then I take that difference quotient and I see what happens to it when h gets really teeny tiny. As it gets towards zero, that's why the h has an arrow going towards zero. I just do my substitution here and then I expand. You're going to get quite used to doing this. And then you can see I get to this line where all this stuff starts cancelling like crazy. You're like, ooh, this is looking good, this is promising. And then when I've divided through by h, I end up with this. Okay. Now, when you look at this object, 2x plus h plus 3, we no longer have this problem we started with of division by zero. You're like, oh, I can just see what happens. If h was zero, this guy just kind of disappears, right? Leaving you with this. Now let's think about this for a minute. So far we have by hand done this process of finding a derivative, okay? Now I should point out, and this is actually worth writing maybe where you wrote all of that up, right? This process of doing it by hand is called differentiating, remember that's the whole name, but breaking apart all the algebra and doing this in this very long way is called differentiating by first principles. And the name is exactly what it says. It's like we're going back to the basics. We're thinking about gradient. And so it takes us forever to go through this. But hopefully you're starting to get a sense. Now that we've done this three times, there are some patterns. Let's have a think about this, right? The first derivative, sorry, the first function that we looked at just now, this morning actually, was x squared minus 4x, right? Does anyone remember what its derivative was? Um, 2x. 2x minus 4. Okay, that was our derivative, our gradient function. The next one we had to look at was 5x plus 1. What was the derivative, the gradient function? Five. It's just 5. And then the one we just did over here was x squared plus 3x plus 2. And we've just determined that its gradient function, its derivative, is 2x plus 3. Okay, let's observe some things. Have a look at everything in the first column. And then look at what happens as you differentiate, which puts you in the second column. Okay, Anyone want to shout out anything that they notice? Anything at all? Well, there's very, very like terms. So you can see terms are very similar, right? It's like there's a lot in common between them. Can anyone be more specific about what they see that's in common? Yeah. Ah, okay. Coefficient of x is 2 and 2 here. Like, well, this coefficient here. Like the 3x and the 4x. Uh, the, this minus 4 yeah. and this minus 4. I should highlight that. You should too, right? This minus 4 just kind of jumps over here, right? And this 3 just jumps over here. That's interesting. What else do you see? Yeah, Rasen. Um, like when we have, it's like the biggest one, which is like x squared there. We, t we take 1x from it, so it's only x left. Ah. There's no x left. Okay, that was a really big idea that Rasen just said. So let me see if I can repeat it and, and try and unpack it here. Rasen said, we have a look at like the biggest x term over here, right? Um, if we think back to our polynomials, this is what we call the leading term. So it's got the highest power. In this case, it's an x squared, then there's an x, then there's another x squared over here. When you go over to the derivative, it's like you, um, it's like you reduce the power by 1. Do you see that? The x squared, it's not squared anymore. It's just, there's just a single x there. This, this one was x to the power of 1. What happens when you reduce that by 1? Zero. X to the power of 0, which is just, it's just a number, isn't it? Right? And then the same thing seems to happen here. So I could actually draw a parallel from this over to here. By the way, the x squared became a 2x there, and this x squared also became a 2x squared, 2x. That's probably not a coincidence. Um, what did you notice about, notice about this plus 1 and this plus 2? Did you notice anything about that? What happened to it? Just seems to have 
vanish. Now think about this for a second. When you just look at the algebra, it's a bit hard to see, but I want you to think about it <coughs> visually. Right? Remember we said, oh, uh, wrong color. This guy here, we got to the five and you're like, oh, what's the point, right? Like the gradient is five. What difference does the plus one make to this function here? What difference does it make? If I change it to like plus 100, what difference would that make? Gary? It has the same gradient, but it just moves it higher or lower. Oh. Here's 5x plus 1, right? 5x plus 1. Uh, where would, say, 5x minus 1 be? It'd be down here, right? Or, say, 5x. Or, say, 5x plus whatever. Okay? And when you have a look at each of these, right? Does it not seem the gradient is the same across every one? It's just their position that changes, right? So you can see here, when you go from the original function to its gradient, you don't care about where it is. Can I say that again? When you're looking from the original function to the gradient, you don't care where it is, you just care about how fast is Usain Bolt running. Does that make sense? How fast is this changing? What's the difference? Okay? It doesn't matter where he started, if he starts in Beijing or Berlin or whatever, it's how quickly does he move, right? What about this plus two? What does that do? Same deal, right? It's just moving the parabola. It's just moving it up and down. We don't care where it is up and down. We care about is it steep? Is it shallow? Is it going up? Is it going down? Does this make sense? Okay.